In this topic, we're going to discuss the control of the cardiac output. So, by the end of this topic, you should know the equation for cardiac output, the factors controlling cardiac output, changing cardiac output, and then we're going to discuss when does heart rate increase and when does heart rate decrease. Here are two terms that you need to learn. The volume of the blood pumped out of the heart during each contraction is the stroke volume. And the volume of blood passing through the heart is the same on the left and right. Then your cardiac output is the total volume of blood pumped out per minute. So write down this equation, this is what you need to know, and also notice the units. So it's cubic decimeter per minute for cardiac output, heart rate is beats per minute, and stroke volume is cubic decimeters per beat. Now during exercise, the cardiac output must increase to carry oxygenated blood at a higher rate to meet the oxygen demand in the muscles. Oxygen is required for respiration, which releases energy in the form of ATP. Now athletes have got low resting heart rates and increased stroke volume. Okay, we're going to discuss factors or what controls cardiac output. The first is the cardiovascular center in the medulla oblongata. Chemicals, for example, adrenaline and noradrenaline. We're also going to look at Starling's law, which is to do with the volume of blood entering the heart. Here are two new, uh, new terms that you're going to come across, baroreceptors and chemoreceptors. Okay, starting off with the cardiovascular center in the medulla oblongata. This is involved in the control of the cardiovascular system via the vagus, which is also called the parasympathetic and sympathetic nerve. So have a look at this diagram as I'm going along. Let's have a look at the vagus nerve. It decreases the heart rate by going directly to the sinoatrial node and the AVN, atrioventricular node. Then the sympathetic nerves increase the heart rate, so they increase the force of contraction. So they also increase the stroke volume. These nerves can also stimulate the adrenal glands to produce noradrenaline, which will also increase the heart rate. Adrenaline and noradrenaline, which are chemicals, work together with the sympathetic nervous system to speed up the heart rate. Okay, looking at Starling's law, the Frank Starling law of the heart is when there's an increased volume of blood entering the heart, there'll be an increased stretch of the myocardium, so there's an increased force to pump the blood out of the heart. So you can see this in the diagram. Here you can see the blood entering the heart. It's going to cause a stretch of the myocardium. So there's increased force to pump the blood out of the heart. So if you keep that previous diagram in mind, then let's have a look at the Frank Starling law. There's a direct relationship between the amount of stretching of the cardiac muscle and the strength of the cardiac muscle contraction. So the more stretch there is, due to the volume of blood entering the heart, the greater the muscle contraction. Now during exercise, the muscles use oxygen, so the oxygen concentration of the blood is low. Carbon dioxide concentration in the blood is increased. Nitric acid gets formed, which causes dilation of the blood vessels by relaxing the muscles. 
This results in an increase of blood moving in the veins and so more blood enters the heart. The cardiac muscles are therefore stretched and the contractions are strengthened. Okay, let's have a look at the baroreceptors. These are stretch receptors in the aorta and carotid artery. So your aorta is that loop and your carotid arteries go up to your head. If the blood pressure increases, these receptors are stretched and stimulated. They then send impulses to the brain, which sends a, a signal via the vagus nerve to slow down the heart rate and lower the stroke volume. Chemoreceptors are receptors sensitive to carbon dioxide concentration. They are found in the brain and the walls of the carotid arteries and aorta. So when the carbon dioxide concentration increases, they cause an increase in cardiac output. So here's a nice diagram to show you how blood loss will result in a decrease in arterial pressure and alteration in the blood gases. This stimulates the chemoreceptor and baroreceptor reflexes, which increase cardiac output. So you remember the equation cardiac output is equal to heart rate times stroke volume. So it can either be increased by increasing the heart rate or increasing the stroke volume. Which do you think is preferable? Well, a large stroke volume. This is because it places less effort on the heart. Now at rest, the cardiac output is about 5 cubic decimeters per minute. And the heart rate is about 60 to 100 beats per minute. Now during exercise, the heart rate increases so that the cardiac output increases. If a person is fit, the resting pulse is low and the stroke volume is high. And during exercise, a small increase in heart rate can cause a large increase in the cardiac output. This is because the stroke volume is already high. The resting pulse is also resumed quickly after exercise is stopped. So when does heart rate increase? Well, it increases with exercise, after eating, and smoking. And then when does heart rate decrease? It decreases with age and when asleep. And that concludes our lesson, the end.